All right. Thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, my name is Kevin Jones. Um, I am also AKA shutterblock.eth. You may see me running around taking photos. Uh, I'm also a photographer for the event. Uh, so I do a little bit of both. Um, and I'm also a developer advocate for Scaffold ETH. Um, that's why we guys are here today. We're talking about Scaffold ETH. Uh, I don't actually have any slides. Uh, this is all going to be like live demo. And we're going to go through and actually do a live demo uh, and show how it works. This is all my contact information if you guys want to uh, save my contact info. Uh, but everything we're going to do is uh, going to be live demo. And um, if, if you're looking to get started with Scaffold ETH, uh, can you guys see that okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, if you do a Google search for Scaffold ETH, you're going to get one of the first links that's going to come up is going to be the docs or the actual GitHub repo. repo. Um, so everything you really need is in those two pages. Um, if you actually go to the GitHub repo, it's going to have a, a readme that's going to walk you through how to get up, up and running. Uh, we're going to do that in real time, and we're going to kind of build a dap and show kind of what the process looks like uh, here as you go. Um, so let's go ahead and just kind of dive right into it. Um, I'm using a Tmux, which is basically a terminal multiplexer. It's just going to have uh, allow me to have multiple windows open at the same time. You pretty much always need like three windows open to get started with Scaffold ETH, and that's because you're running Hard Hat uh, in a chain window, and you're running uh, your, your front end, so in React. And then that third window is kind of where you're doing like your deploys and uh, your other command line stuff, okay? So I've already gone ahead and basically che checked out the repository, so we're good to go. Uh, I've also gone ahead and I did uh, a Yarn install because that takes a little while to do. That's actually going to go out and get all the dependencies and install everything you need uh, to get up and running. Uh, once you're there, then the next thing all you need to do is just do Yarn Chain. So Yarn Chain is going to spin up a copy of Hard Hat. Uh, hard, hat, hard Hat is this kind of like virtualized uh, Ethereum virtual machine that you're running locally. And it's going to come with all of these kind of like play uh, accounts that have some play Ether in there. And so we can start kind of uh, taking that Ether and kind of testing our assumptions of our smart contract, right? Um, so you're always going to kind of keep that first window open. That, that window is where you're going to uh, just kind of see your console output for Hard Hat. Uh, in the next window, you're going to do a Yarn start, okay? So, sorry. <laughs> so yarn uh, what the heck's going on there we go yarn start okay so yarn start is going to spin up a copy of uh, react uh, so another core component of scaffold eth is react uh, so that's going to take a second to get to kind of get up and running uh, but once you get up this is exactly what you're going to see it's going to spin up uh, on port 3000 a copy of scaffold eth and uh, you could kind of think of scaffold eth as this kind of like ui and this like front end that's kind of already like plugged up for you with your smart contract. So it actually comes, Scaffold ETH comes with a smart contract. Um, but if we go here to this the, this second tab, which is the debug contracts, which is kind of like the sweet sauce of Scaffold ETH, you'll see here that it's not loading. And that's because we haven't done a deploy yet. So we got to go back to here. And like I said, we're always going to have these two windows open, our back end, which is hard hat and our front end. You can see that we got some console output from hard hat and we can see that React started up successfully. So all we need to do is come down here to this next window and do a yarn deploy, okay? So I can do yarn deploy and it's gonna do exactly that. It's gonna deploy my smart contract. It's gonna tell me the, uh, the address uh, for, the, for the account. And then it's also gonna show me how much gas and how much time it took, right? So uh, we're up and running and now we should have a copy of our smart contract here, which we do. So what do we got here? It's a very basic smart contract. Uh, it's got a purpose. So it's got one variable and then it's got a function already written for us that's gonna allow us to update that, right? Um, and one of the cool things about Scaffold ETH is it comes with what's called burner wallets, okay? So if you're building a dApp, like, you know, you're, you're going to have to, uh, you know, hook up some kind of like provider and then uh, do all that stuff. This is kind of already done for you inside of Scaffold ETH inside of the browser. So if we look up here in the corner, we get a copy of a private key and a public key that's in the browser. And we have the address uh, and we could actually like go to it if it was a, on, a, on a mainnet. And then we could also just grab some funds. So we can take some funds from Hard Hat and then mat, uh, basically add them to our DAP. We're up and running, and then we can start interacting and, and interact with our DAP. Um, so, sorry. All right, so um, we, we see here we have, a, we have a purpose, okay? And it's just a, a variable, and then we have an ability to update that purpose. So if I come over here and just say like foo like this and hit send, it's going to allow us to change that state, okay? So we've spun up our, our DAP, we've interacted, we've got some gas from, from Hard Hat, and we've made some changes to that smart contract. 
We could also come over here and get a new copy of the contract by doing a yarn deploy dash reset. So dash dash reset. And that's going to force a new copy of the contract and then it's going to revert the state. So you can almost think of it like the deploy as this kind of way just to kind of reset your smart contract and then kind of test your assumptions as you start building, which is exactly what we're going to do next, right? So let, let's, let's load up our uh, smart contract here. So let's go code and let's load that up. Uh, the first time that you you load here, you're gonna uh, if you're using VS Code, it's gonna ask you to trust the uh, uh, contract, basically, or basically trust the repository, which I recommend you do. And it's gonna uh, if you have highlighting for solidity, it's gonna show you exactly what your uh, uh, smart contract is gonna look like here. And uh, when we look at the project for Scaffold ETH, there's this packages folder, okay? And inside that packages folder, there's essentially like two main places where you're gonna spend majority of your time. One is the hardhat folder, and that's going to be inside of the contracts folder and the deploy, deploy folder, which we're going to get to in a second. And then you can find your contract. So this is a copy of the, the, the kind of Hello World smart contract. And we can see here's the purpose that we have. And then we have like an empty constructor. And then we have this function that allows us to update that purpose. Okay. So it's a real basic smart contract. Uh, it's almost like a Hello World, right? Um, and then we have below that, we have the React app as well. So if you go under uh hard hat there's also the react react app which we're going to go into a little bit but we're not going to touch that too much in this demo uh, but really majority of the time you're going to spend probably is here in the contracts folder so we could hard code a change like this like hard code uh awesome apps or something like that if i can type today like that save it and then we could do a redeploy and then uh you will see that it was successful and then we can see that that change is reflected in our front end so we could do some start doing some changes um, so one of the first things that you learn when you're, uh, you know, writing a DAP is you probably want to have some kind of like access control. Uh, so let's let's do something here. Let, let's take a, uh, let's create a new variable. Okay, so we're going to make it an address variable. We're going to make it public and we're going to call it boss. Okay, and we're going to basically grab our uh, burner wallet, which is right here inside the browser. Again, we're not using MetaMask or anything like that. And then we're just going to basically paste that in here and then save it and then redeploy. Uh, let's do that. Oh, sorry. Let me close these out. These are going to get in the way the whole time. <laughs> okay, so let's go re reset. Okay, so now we are going to have a, a new variable. So we see that the, the UI is automatically transformed. We see we have a new variable. It's called the boss, and it matches what our burner wallet is. So what you're going to want to do then at this point, let's say you wanted to create uh, some kind of function that only that particular boss could call, right? Let's do that here. Let's create a require statement. So the next thing you'll learn is you can do like a require and you can do message.sender. So when you're uh, with uh, Ethereum, you have access to or with Solidity, you have access to the variables for who's calling that function. And so message.sender is anyone who's going to sign a transaction for that function, right? So we're going to require that the message.sender is equal to the boss. Otherwise, uh, not the boss, something like that. And sorry that and then let's close it off save that and redeploy so you can see what we're doing we're kind of automatically been able to get up our instance start making some changes to our smart contract and start start testing our assumptions so let's let's try to test that so now what i want to do is i'm going to bring up an incognito window okay i'm going to go to localhost 3000 same same dap and we're going to go to it and then we're going to try to make a change on this kind of like new uh, user account we have. So here we have this kind of like uh, purple blocky guy. And then here we have this kind of like green blocky, blocky guy. And so if I get some funds from the faucet and I try to make a change uh, to foo like this and then hit send, it's going to tell me not the boss. So we've been able to kind of implement some access control on the smart contract. Okay. So that's actually not the proper way to do access control. There's a much easier way. Uh, and so what you can do is uh, you can utilize what's called uh, uh, Ownable, which is an open Zeppelin uh, uh, contract. So we're going to do that instead. So let's let's kind of revert what we did. Let's let's get rid of this here. And let's also get rid of this hard coded address here like this. And let's save. And instead, you'll notice up here, there's like a uh, commented out section where it allows us to import another smart contract. So with Solidity, you can import a smart contract. So in this case, we're going to import the open Zeppelin ownable smart contract. And when you do that, um, you can then inherit that smart contract in here as an inherited one like this. So we're going to import it, inherit it, and then we get access to essentially all of the functions. We get access to the modifiers, the variables that are defined when that 
particular smart contract uh, is deployed. So let's save that, okay? And then let's go ahead and redeploy. So so Scaffold ETH is this kind of like, like I said, continuous loop where you're kind of testing some things, deploying your changes, going back to your UI, and then kind of like testing your assumptions. So we get to this point, and then what what's different here? Anyone notice? We don't have the boss variable anymore because we got rid of that, but we have this new owner variable, okay? So owner is should be the owner of the smart contract, right? Um, but you, we, we would expect maybe that it's going to match our burner wallet, but it does not. It's it's a random private key at the, or public key that's there. Um, that is the very first account uh, that comes from Hardhat. So because we're using Hardhat to deploy our smart contract, uh, the very first com contract or uh, account is the deployer, okay? So what we need to do now is we need to actually uh, adjust the Hardhat deployment configuration script. So if you look inside the Hardhat folder, right below that, there's a deploy script, right? So we can go here and we can actually start making some changes to our deploy script. So we want to have access to this smart contract. So we don't want it just to be this random hard hat config. We want to use the burner wallet. So if you go to this uh, this file, it's going to show you exactly how the smart contract is being deployed. And it's going to show you what the parameters are. And then what you'll notice here, there's a section that's already kind of like grayed out that you can just kind of copy from that allows us to get a copy of the deployed smart contract. So we're going to do that next. So we're going to we're going to take we're going to create a variable called your contract and we're going to use ethers to get that contract that's uh, here with the deployer, which is uh, again, it's the very first uh, account of Hardhat. And then you'll also notice that uh, I, I mentioned it earlier a bit, but when you in inherit a smart contract, you get access to all of the functions and you get access to the modifiers and the variables. And so you'll notice that our smart contract uh, debug contracts tab has automatically adjusted again to add some new functions. And the most important one that we're going to be using today is the transfer ownership one. Um, and that's going to allow us to transfer the ownership of the smart contract basically out uh, of the hard hat deployer account. So let's, let's call that. So we can just come in here and basically we can grab this, which also is just kind of already written for us. And we can paste it right below. And then this will this allows us to use that variable, call the transfer ownership, and then input whatever private or public key that we want to here. So we can grab this here, right? This is our burner wallet. We can paste it here and we can hit save. And then we can go ahead and redeploy again. So now uh, during the deploy, not only did it deploy uh, the smart contract, but it should have also transferred it. So let's see if it did. It did. So now the owner is going to match our uh, our account here. So we've kind of are, st are starting to build our smart contract. Um, so we're going to uh, kind of close out the deploy script because we're kind of good with that right now. Um, but I do want to show like uh, how you would uh, use that ownable smart contract. Earlier, we did the require statement, but ownable also has the uh, only owner modifier. So we actually need to add that if we're going to do anything that's access controlled here. So we can put it as a modifier. Basically, all a modifier is, is it's another function that gets called before that existing function is call, is executed. So it always checks to, to make sure that only the owner could call this function. Um, we're not going to use that yet, so let's go ahead and close that because we it's not really too interesting to have a function that only you can call on your smart contract, right? You want to make it publicly available uh, and publicly open, right? That's the whole purpose. So instead, let, let's kind of build something else. Let's let's requ let's do another require statement here, but this time let's also require instead of uh, we're checking the message sender, let's require that there's a value passed, right? So let's do message dot uh, value um, is equal equal to a price. Otherwise, not enough. Something like that. And so now we need to set that 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 price, right? So you went public price equals. So we can just type in here like exactly what we want. So we're gonna do 0 0.01 uh, ether like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and redeploy. Okay. So uh, now we we again we have our our uh, uh, contracts modified. We have this new price variable, which is interesting. And then now if we want to call this purpose to like foo like this and hit send, it's going to say we don't haven't sent enough money, right? We need to send some value. So what we can do is grab uh, this kind of like amount that we want to send. And you would think you could just like put it in like this, right? 
and send that, but we have to deal in way instead of uh, decimals, right? So what's cool about Scaffold is it has this little green button. You can just click that and it's going to do the math for you. So it's going to multiply that times 10 to the 18th power and it's going to give us what we need in way and then we can hit send and oh, I don't have enough gas. So here's where, here's where we can say, all right, well, maybe that little 20 bucks that we got from the faucet was not enough. So we can grab our uh, address. We can come down here to the corner to this little like other wallet and it's just unlimited supply of ETH. Basically we have like almost 10,000 ETH. <laughs> so we can paste our address here and we can get like a thousand bucks and hit send. Or if we wanted to, we could also do it in uh, ETH as well, right? So you, you have this kind of ability to just grab as much money as you need and then get going. So now let's hit send. There we go. So now what's cool is our smart contract is acting as a bank. We've actually uh, established this uh, cool like vending machine, right? In our smart contract. Uh, so I could actually come over here to this like kind of incognito guy. I could come over here, get some funds, change, also send a thousand dollars over here. And I could say, I am cool or something like that. And 0 0.001, oh, no, no. send. And then anyone can use it, right? We have this kind of like cool vending machine. But what's the problem? There's no, we can't get the money out. <laughs> How are we going to get the money out? So let's figure out what we need to do to do that, right? We need to create a withdraw function, okay? So let's let's write that real quick. So um, we're just going to do like a function called uh, withdraw like this. And we're going to make it public. But this time we're going to use the modifier. We only want the owner to be able to call it, right? So now we can uh, do a, um, uh, so we'll set a Boolean called success. Otherwise, we won't set that. And then we'll do a message.sender. So whoever's calling this function, we will do a call and we will pass uh, the value as the entire balance, basically, of the contract. So we'll do address of this smart contract and we will take the balance like this. And then we need to close this off. Did I type that right? Hopefully we did. Let's save that. Make sure it works. Deploy. So we get this word error, that, um, but for the most part, it's going to work at this point. Um, so let's get, take a look at our dApp. So now if we kind of come over here and we make a change to it, say foo like this and hit send, we're able to uh, put the money in there. And if we come over here to the uh, incognito account, uh, so let's do that. And then we kind of try to try to get that those funds from here. We have the withdraw function. It's going to tell me, no, I'm not the owner, right? So I, I, can't, I don't have access to, to withdraw that. But if I come over here and I hit send, then boom, I'm able to withdraw those funds. And those went from the smart contract into my wallet. Okay. Um, now, what's interesting is we could actually just make one small minor change with the uh, smart contract. And uh, just to show what's, what's interesting is we can take, we have that variable that's price, right? We're, we're setting the price up here above. We could do something like this where we could say price equal uh, price uh, times 100, I don't know, divided by or sorry, times 101 divided by 100, something like that. Yeah, let's do that. And then let's redeploy that change. <clears throat> okay, so now if we uh, c come over here and we make our change, we say, if, uh, what's up? And hit send. What do we see that happens? Now the price is, uh, it's got a curve, right? We got this cool... Uh, not only is it able to accept a value and you can, anyone can interact with it, but it's also on a price curve and we can start doing some really interesting things with our smart contract. Okay. Um, so at this point, um, uh, I do want to kind of show a little bit more, uh, let's see here. So, um, if you, if you kind of are just getting started, uh, with smart contracts or writing smart contracts, uh, scaffold ETH is just a good solution because it, like I said, it comes with kind of all the stuff you need. Um, really quick shill is if you guys are interested in kind of like testing your ability and kind of going through uh, the process of like building different kinds of apps, I would recommend checking out Speedrun Ethereum. Uh, Speedrun Ethereum is cool because you can just connect your wallet and you can kind of go through uh, various challenges. Uh, I need to unlock this real quick. Let's see. So um, it's it's got a obviously a Web3 type of experience where you can check in with your MetaMask. I don't know why it's not working right now make sure I'm on the right a second here okay connect wallet metamask all right there we go uh it's got this cool experience where you can actually go through and do different challenges right so like the very first challenge is you build an nft deploy an nft 
Then you do a decentralized staking app, a token vendor, um, and then eventually you actually get invited to what's called the Build Guild or the Biddle Guild. Uh, the Biddle Guild is a collection of developers, myself, and there's some other uh, Build Guilders here that uh, are trying to like help the ecosystem and bring it forward um, by providing value uh, as enhancing Scaffold ETH or just doing things uh, in the environment to help support Ethereum. And uh, the cool thing is if you actually become a part of the Build Guild, you can uh, do some work for the Build Guild and you can be incentivized to do that and actually get streamed ETH uh, if you uh, become a core contributor or, or someone that's, that's involved in the Build Guild. So since the Build Guild's been out, there has been over 353 ETH that has been streamed to other developers. Uh, and we have about 700 other builders or, or people that have interacted with the Build Guild and about 700 different builds of Scaffold ETH. So it's a really cool way for if you guys are trying to get involved in a community uh, to kind of do that. So th that's my real quick shill on if you're getting started. Those are kind of great next steps for you guys, even after the hackathon. Uh, but if you're building a hackathon project, build it on Scaffold ETH because it's going to be uh, a huge uh, head start for you. And another thing, too, is if you go to Scaffold ETH and you go to the, the core uh, GitHub repository, there's two things. One, there's a uh, Scaffold ETH examples directory, which has a bunch of starting points for like ERC721, 1155, um, you name it. You can just come over here and just do a search. So let's say I want to search like 721. It's got an example of what that would look like. Or um, uh, you could just do like NFT. And then there's some like uh, NFT examples uh, in here as well. So check out that and you can you can essentially fork uh, that specific version and then you have a starting point for your project so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel uh, and it really gives you a leg up on getting started with the hackathon so that's my my recommendation uh, now there's another there's another couple of things I always get asked like okay well what if I like nextjs versus react or what if I like typescript uh, versus JavaScript um, there is a new version of scaffold ETH, so it's called se2. And I'd recommend checking it out. Um, it's it's a special uh, GitHub repository. You can come down here and do a search for it. It's SE-2. So it's in a test. So uh, it's still being tested. It's not the, the full-on replacement for Scaffold ETH. So it doesn't have a lot of the forks that you would find with the original version. Um, but it is a little faster. Um, and if you feel more comfortable with Next.js and with TypeScript, that might be something that you guys can try out. Um, if you're competing in the hackathon, I would recommend though to probably use the very first version of Scaffold ETH, uh, just because it's a little more vetted um, and you know it's got more starting points right uh, for you. Uh, I'm going to show you what Scaffold ETH two looks like real quick. So I've actually I'm going to have to just shut down this one real quick. So let me do that, and then I've got a copy of here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I have SE two already checked out. I'm going to do a yarn chain. And this, this, so again, this is if you're using just separate windows. Second window, I'm going to do a yarn start, right? And then in the next window, I'm going to do yarn deploy. Okay. So contracts deployed. Looks like it's up and running. Let's take a look. Boom, we'll go through 1,000. Same port. There we go. So looks completely different so uh pretty much all the demo that i did is not going to make sense but it's got the same concepts right it's got the burner wallet right uh you can do the same thing you can press a button to grab funds from the faucet um you can uh, you just have the debug contract folder uh or a tab i should say where you can actually test your read and write functions you can see your variables listed you can see the contract and how much balance it has and then there's an example ui as well which is a little bit more enhanced and it's built again on Next.js. So uh, depending on, like I said, how comfortable you are uh, with dealing with maybe some caveats of SE2, this would be an option for you guys as well. So leave that up to you guys. You guys can decide. So that's awesome. All right, so we got five minutes for questions. So I know there's going to be some questions. So let's let's tackle those. Yes. Yeah. So, and I know you didn't want to go into it. You didn't want to go into it, but I'm wondering, is there like some kind of demo you can show on how somebody like me can get started with like the front end using Scaffold ETH? Yeah, yeah. It's, it definitely is a little bit of, uh, so, you know, basically the question was uh, for people that are more into like writing smart contracts and we're interested in the back ends and not necessarily front end developers, where do you get started? 
so some of the challenges have some, uh, the scaffoldy speed run Ethereum challenges have some level of stuff you do with the UI, but let me just give a real quick run through of it so you can kind of have a start. So here in React app, we, we have the React app folder and then we have the SRC folder. Uh, and then inside of there, there is the, basically the, uh, let's see the, not the components folder, but the uh, views. Uh, and yeah, so uh, app app.jsx is kind of like scaffold ETH app, right? So you can think of this as kind of everything that's already written for you, all the variables that are defined, all the functions, uh, all the, the hooks and stuff like that are already loaded for you. And so a lot of the, the, the magic sauce that you see is, is what you see here. Inside of the views folder is where your home JSX file. So let me go back to scaffold. Well, I don't have the other one loaded, but uh, you saw earlier there was some tabs, right? The very first tab is kind of where you would build your app. So you would focus on doing stuff inside of that kind of like home folder. Um, and then the debug contracts is like for that. So home.jsx is that kind of first tab that just have some kind of like examples for you and it just kind of gets you up and running. Oh, it's getting dark in here. Uh, and then um, there's an example UI area, which is probably what I would recommend for you because that's gonna give you some examples of how you interact with, uh, you know, signing a transaction or sending a transaction or getting some kind of value from the smart contract or, you know, reading a value. So example UI, and then um, there is also some stuff in hints, but really example UI is probably what you're looking for as kind of that that help, that hand holding. And it gives you some examples as you go through here and you can see what they look like. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. All right. What do we got? What else? Just to add to that question, because I know in the Scaffold ETH organization, there's some very work in progress repositories for like extracting out some of you guys, like the hooks and components that are being used in Scaffold ETH. Like what's the kind of, I haven't read anything about it in terms of like what the long-term goal is, whether or not that is something for kind of someone with the same profile of like making it really easy to have a address input or like all these other things that I've, I think I've seen being actively developed. On the... Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the goals are. I don't know if Austin wants to come up here. <laughs> Not to throw you on the, under the bus there. Ah. No. So there, there are components, but they're still built in the scaffold right now. But feel free to steal them and take them out. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. TLDR Scaffold E2 has good address input, and we're using Wagme. Wagme. Yeah. I like you, folks. <laughs> All right, cool. What are the questions? Oh. Uh, which libraries are we using for Scaffold E2? That's probably. Scaffolds uh, Next.js. For Next.js? Okay. Yeah. Me, uh, Rainbow Kit, and then a bunch of Marker Cone. Good. Right, for, for, for like CSS and. Okay, okay. Kelly, no. And there also is a Next.js build of Scaffold Eth 1, so you can use that. Um, if you just go in here, there's a Next.js TypeScript build. It works pretty well. Um, so that if you don't want to use uh, scaffold ETH2, you still want to use scaffold ETH, that might be another option as well. So awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming. And uh, if you guys have problems, let me know.